What's up guys? Today I want to do a new video. So the housing market's crazy. We all know that it's crazy. And a lot of people are comparing it to 2008 and everybody's like, we're in a housing bubble. It can't last this long. It's going to crash. So first off, it is nothing like the 2008 crash. So let's start with a few statistics. In 2006, leading up to the 2008 crash, there were $376 billion in loan originations that were two people that were not qualified, FICO's under 620, that were, at the time, they were high-risk loans, which were larger amounts. They were using a different debt-to-income ratio. They were doing bank statement loans or no verification or no paperwork loans. Very, very different. These type of high-risk loans are almost non-existent now. So compared to now, we are at $74 billion compared to $376 for loan originations with a FICO score of under 620. So people that are borrowing money are more qualified. They're being vetted more. Documentation is being verified more, employment, those type of things. Um, so the conditions are completely different. The situation that we're in is a simple supply and demand. In the last 13 years, so let's say the last decade as a round number, there have been less homes being built than were built in the 70s and 80s, even though the population has increased a lot, <laughs> obviously. Um, not only that, but, you know, another thing that comes into play is everybody's like, oh, forbearance, uh, you know, eviction, this and that, all that's going to happen. So let's break it down like this. So the predicted amount of people that were going to be using the forbearance pro program was 30%, okay? The actual used was just under 8.5%. So not only did they, you know, assume that only 30% of people that were financing a mortgage were going to go into the forbearance program, only actually just under 8.5% actually went into the program, which means the predictions were way, 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 way off. Of that, you know, eight and a half percent, only about three and a half percent are still in the forbearance program. So think about that. They predicted 30. It was actually about eight and a half. And today we're at three and a half. So that means that 96 and a half percent of the people that finance homes are not in a forbearance, not facing foreclosure, anything like that. That's a huge statistic, a huge difference to what was originally thought. Um, and of that small three and a half percent that are still in the forbearance program, 87% of them have at least 10% equity in their home, which means we went from 30% predicted to an actual of 8.5% to currently still in only 3.5%. And of that 3.5%, 87% have at least 10% equity in their home. What does that mean? Short sale. For people that don't understand what a short sale is. A short sale is when you have to sell the house for less than you owe on it. So with 87% of that smaller 3.5% having at least 10% equity in their home, that means that they could list it, they could sell it, they could pay off their mortgage and avoid foreclosure, avoid having to do a short sale. Are there still a small percentage of that remaining 13% that are potentially in the forbearance, you know, that are not paid back? Are there going to be foreclosures? Yeah, there's foreclosures every single year. But case in point is that it is nothing like 2008, nothing like 2006, 2007 that led up to 2008 crash. We are not in the same situation. We are not in a housing bubble. It's completely different. Are homes going to level out? Yes. Are you going to see homes come down in price? Yes. And the reason that you'll see homes come down in price is because people are overpricing their homes. They're pricing them too high, basically for too much money. They're making them too expensive. They're pricing them out of the market, which people are, you know, you come into appraisals, you come in the appraisal gap contingencies, there's so much that's involved with an overpriced home. So people that are, you know, buyers especially that are becoming educated on this are not putting the offers into these overpriced homes. 
Um, and what's that doing? That means that you're starting to see homes sit a little bit. You're starting to see price, them do price reductions, but that just means that they're bringing them down to market value. It doesn't mean that the market is crashing or coming down. That's just people that are overpricing them that are bringing them down to be where they're supposed to be. So will the increase in price slow down? Yes. Will that decrease the price? Not really. The inventory is still so low that it's a simple supply and demand. And tons of people are still looking. There's people that have buyer fatigue. They're stepping out of the market and they're waiting for the market to come down. I get it. I understand there's buyer's fatigue. You know, you want to make sure that you're set up in a good situation. You're set up properly to purchase a home if you're looking to buy. But just, you know, stay focused on the goal of home ownership. You know, it will get better. There'll be more, you know, there'll be a leveling out where prices won't be increasing as much. You know, you won't have as many offers. You know, builders, once material costs come down, builders are starting to build again. There'll be new home inventory. A lot of people will, you know, start to put their house in the market that have been considering it because the market's high. So, you know, just a few things to consider. But, you know, stay focused on the goal of home ownership. You know, if anybody has any questions, you can always reach out to me. So I am your local realtor and I'm always here for you guys. All right. I'm out.